What is the difference between a townhouse and a condominium? Believe it or not, there are two answers. Hi, I'm Gordon Baker with Remax Alliance Group, and I want to clarify something that can be confusing unless you understand a key distinction between condominiums and townhouses. And if you're in the market for either, this is even more important. So let's, uns uh, let's unravel the difference. Structurally, we typically think of a townhouse as having vertical ownership with common walls between the units and condominiums as a horizontal property. Now, this is all nice and good, but what really matters, especially when it comes to financing, is how the county assessor classifies the property. Remember, the MLS may say it's a townhouse and it looks like a townhouse, but the county assessor could classify it as a condo. And yes, this does happen. Here's a quick example. The dwelling type says it's a townhouse, but the com community name implies that it's a condominium and indeed it is. So if you do a property search exclusively by the dwelling type, you're in for some disappointment when you find out the county assessor says it's something different. Now, are you learning something that you didn't know before? If so, please like the video and subscribe to receive future real estate content. Now, the property use description from the county assessor is the key, not the structural appearance or what the dwelling type says in the MLS. Go to the county assessor's website and check the property use description to know which one it is. Let's look at how this works for a property in Maricopa County. Go to the Maricopa County Assessor's website, then enter the property address. On the next page, scroll down to the valuation section and look for the property use description line to see the classification that the lender will use to determine the lending guidelines. In this case, it is a condominium. Obviously, for their properties, you may find them classified as a townhouse. Remember, this is how the lender, deter lender determines the property type, period. This distinction is critical because mortgage rates will be different for townhouses versus a condominium. Now, something to find out when buying a condominium with a conventional loan is if the property is warrantable, meaning that it conforms to certain Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. If it's not warrantable, finance will be financing will be much more difficult and result in a higher interest rate. Another thing to remember, mortgage rates for condos are typically higher and dependent on the type of occupancy and the down payment amount. The mortgage interest rate for financing a townhouse is more similar to that of a single family home and therefore typically lower than a condo. Now, if you're considering FHA financing for either a townhouse or a condo, it will need to be on the FHA approved community list. Here's the website to check the community to see if it qualifies. This should be determined very early in the process. So you're not running around looking at properties that don't qualify. And regardless of whether the property is a townhouse or a condo, you'll have to be very comfortable living with an, within an HOA and the CCNRs, which stand for Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions. These will dictate many facets of home ownership. And it's always helpful to understand what is included in the HOA fees since they will be higher than a single family home. Reasons for being higher could include maintenance. The monthly HOA may cover such items as the roof and exterior maintenance of the unit. However, this can vary, so be sure and read the fine print. Next is landscaping. This can be a positive since you won't have to worry about, yes, about yard work, pulling weeds, cutting the lawn once 110 outside. It will be a lock and leave situation. And in other words, very convenient. Next are community amenities. You'll probably have access to a community pool and spa and maybe even a clubhouse or community center. Now we have blanket insurance policy. Now this is, insur this is an insurance policy that covers the structure because you have common walls, floors, and ceilings. But make sure and consider supplemental insurance for the interior space because this is not covered by the blanket insurance policy. Now a common question is how does appreciation for a townhouse or condo compare to that of a single family dwelling? Let's look at graphs for each that cover the last 10 years. Let's start off with a graph of the sales price per square foot for single family residences that have sold in Maricopa County. Now look at the same graph for townhouses and condominiums. What's surprising is how similar the appreciation between the two is. So when you search for a property and believe you've found that ideal townhouse or condo, make sure that it is what you think it is by either you or your realtor checking the county assessor's classification. Your lender will thank you for that and you'll be glad too.
And if you're using an FHA loan, have the lender confirm that it's on the FHA approved community list before writing an offer. For a conventional loan, confirming that the property is warrantable will save you frustration later on. And if you want more information on what to expect with the HOA, here's a video that I did that will be extremely helpful. Now, this was a lot to go through in just a couple of minutes, so if you still have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.